Welcome, everybody. Lots of amazing things have been going on today. Uh, we are uh, going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch, and we are going to be talking about the uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, and we are going to be talking about the Logan. Those are three huge things to talk Pretty about. Pretty big deal for a Thursday, right? Huge. So welcome to my basement. Into my crazy basement. Your basement has its own whiteboard today. I love it, right? We can yeah. actually take notes. Uh -huh. It's our whiteboard. Yeah, we're going to sort of figure this out for everybody. Help we're gonna, them all with their marketing campaign. We're going to take uh, very. Uh, we're going we're to take take some comments, and we can write them all on the board, and then mm -hmm. we can erase the ones that are stupid, and then we'll keep the ones that are great. And then we'll focus test it, yep. and it will be bland. That's right. At the end of it all. At the end of it, it'll be okay. mediocre. It'll be right. a 7 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're shooting for. <laughs> Just a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 is pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, well, let's talk about the Switch. Okay. What'd you think? Okay, listen, we all got up. We have to have to talk about we this. We got up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, it's been a long day already. Mm -hmm. I was I was up at 6 because I have a, a child yep. who woke up at 6, which right. means I woke up at 6. So yep. I've been up for a long time. And uh, Should we review kids right now? Uh, we'll, we'll, seven, seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. <laughs> My kid gets a seven out of ten. At Mine best. gets a ten. Yeah. Ruby, if you're watching, you get a ten. Bullshit. Okay. Um, okay, listen. Okay, I just want everybody with this Nintendo Switch thing, I want, yep. to, I want everybody to just slow down for a second. Right. Because everyone's been going a million miles an hour mm -hmm. about, like, look at this thing. It looks amazing. Let's first, I guess, talk about what it is. Yeah. It's uh, Nintendo's NX, now called the Switch. Mm -hmm. It is a mobile uh, and home console hybrid. Right. So there's this uh, docking station, basically, that connects to your television, and yep. you've got this tablet that's jammed into it. Yep. And when you're when it's like that, you can play games using a controller on your television. Yep. And at any point, you can go over and grab the tablet, whip it out of this dock, and it becomes basically what looks like kind of a Wii U game pad that you can take on the road. And you can uh, make that click-click sound with your, uh, with your mouth. That's right. As you put the things in. It probably makes. It's got to make some sort of sound. It, it must. I hope it, it goes. I hope it goes like this <laughs> every time we do it. <laughs> <laughs> it probably will after a couple of years of using it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah. But uh, they Long sure day. made a big deal out of that clicking sound, right? It was almost yeah. like the Surface ads in a in a way. You know, yeah, how they would yeah. make a big deal out of everything and then whip around and do a dance move, and then that kickstand thing would come out and they'd put that down. It, would, <laughs> it reminded me of that. We had a kickstand shot in the trailer too. They were really we excited about the kickstand. Yeah. The trailer. I yeah. mean, it makes. It makes perfect sense that Nintendo is going in this direction. I think the Wii U was a precursor to thinking about this kind of technology, having a tablet and a console kind of work together. Uh, it does feel like the Wii U should have been this machine. Yeah. Yes, right? yes, 100%. I mean, you were just saying uh, they've you know done this with the Wii U, and the Wii U was like a major failure. So yeah. this definitely gives me a little pause saying, Okay, this is what the Wii U should have been, but the Wii U already happened. Mm -hmm. So are people going to be like, well, thanks for delivering the thing I was hoping for in yeah. like 2012 or whatever? Right. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, here's here's what I want to say about about this thing because because a lot of people are talking about it. Well, we don't know tons, first of all. That's the, and I was yeah. where I was, was going to start there. Yeah. We no one's played it that's no. talking about no. it. Like, we haven't held those little tiny weird controllers you separate. We, mm -hmm. we haven't seen the games running on this thing to see how high res and how great they look. Obviously, the trailer showed some awesome games. We've got Zelda, and we've got Mario, and they've went really big with third parties, which I thought was a smart idea, showing yeah. NBA 2K and Skyrim and, and showing us there are they're going to have that support. They did that for the Wii U, too, though. I know, but it yeah. was smart, and they showed us a big picture of all the different partners, and I, at least they're attending to it in their first reveal. They're not just showing us, like, Mario running around. Right. They're showing a bunch of different experiences. Well, it was really interesting, too, that, you know, Nintendo has the history of being billed as the kids' system, and there were literally no children, I think, in this, uh, in this commercial. Right in this this first reveal of everything, because it would have been abusive to actually have children as part of this marketing horseshit. Because there was so much <laughs> random marketing horseshit in this, and I, that's what I want to talk about just for a second. <laughs> Everyone got stoked at watching the thing come in and out of the whatever, and then people are on the road. Listen, okay, there was a shot of them at a basketball court. Yeah playing a basketball video game. <laughs> that doesn't happen ever. <laughs> no what you're in a basketball court playing basketball. You're like, hey, this is a lot of fun guys. You want to just sit down and like play a basketball video I'm game pooped. in the basketball court. I'm exhausted. Let's go play on our video Let's game. sit at that bench that's right next to the court. <laughs> Everyone and, crowd and play, around yeah. this little TV and let's do it. Then there's like awesome rooftop party across the street yeah. and girls like little hipster girls like playing on her uh her switch and then they're like hey why don't you come over? She's like cool I'll bring my switch and now hipster party with their red cups 
cups filled with like you know jungle juice or whatever crazy stuff they're drinking. Apparently, hipsters do this kind of thing. Though. They sit and play two player I, video I, games I, together. I, I got at young, a big party. You know, EP has been fortunate enough to employ many people, and some of them are young twenty something hipster types. And I see their pictures on their Facebooks and their and their uh, Instagrams, and they're it's like this. Oh, this is not going a good direction. And, but it's just weird. It's I just like... see them on their Facebooks. <laughs> I, see, I them. see those kids on their Facebooks. That's what I sound like. Yeah, uh, but they they have parties like this where everybody's playing Mario Kart and stuff like that. And well, I, it's well like, look, I had because parties because they, they grew up with this stuff that like we we were the first generation to have this become our day to day, but. These kids are born into that, you know? I'm calling them kids. I'm sorry I'm doing that. Listen, but you, I, a lot of young people, this is it, right? So I was on the pot playing Star Control 2 in college with yeah, friends. Like, okay. I get it. And I'm not saying that having a party is a bad idea with video games. That's yeah. great. But I don't think that is the primary use case of this thing is like, go to the party across the street with your thing, and now the party's better. I think right. that's silly. Nintendo I think, has always been, though, devil's advocate, always been about the social gaming experience and, and crowding people every platform launch, every single time. Time, they want people to share that material every they single They could time. have done that on a couch at home. It just felt like another weird step to be like, not only is this a party machine, but you can take it on the go to a party. I yeah. just felt like yeah. this is trying to kind of convince us of something that isn't going to happen. Let me just finish with the sure. other two sure. ridiculous use cases yeah. that I think are just totally crazy. Uh, one of them was the ending, which is Espuertas, mm -hmm. which I'm a I'm an Espuertas <laughs> man. I'm with the Yahoo Espuertas. We are totally running with that boobs line. I love Espuertas. It's, it's better than Ishbart. Yeah, I, I think like Espuertas. Like Espuertas, yes. And like, listen, Nintendo has been negligent with supporting mm. the esports that are already you existing. You can speak to this from a personal perspective, right? From a personal La perspective. Smash Melee and Smash 4 are obviously like the two big Nintendo related esports properties. Now, right. Splatoon has multiplayer. There's Pokken, I guess, but no one's really doing that. Is it Pokken or Pokken? I don't I, think it matters. I think it's Pokken. Pokken? Yeah. Pokken? Which pisses me off every time I have to say it in the rundown because I never know. Is it Pokin or why would it, it be Pokemon and Pokin, Pokin tournament? I have no idea. Okay, all right. It's anyway. like Pocky, which are delicious. Yeah, okay. Great. Better than Pokin. Mm -hmm. um, and like Nintendo's barely supported this scene at all. Melee, you know, there's competitions all the time. There yeah. are these incredibly well-known players like Hungrybox and Leffen and, and Mango. And these guys are like, you know, superstars in that in that sport. And Nintendo doesn't do much to support it. Right. Smash 4 was the only game that came out of the entire Wii U that could be considered any sort of an eSport. And it's not really even as big as Smash Melee, which is an old GameCube game. Right. So you start to Look at them with this huge, here, look at all these awesome teams coming out to this crowded, packed arena well, maybe, for esports. Maybe this is them throwing the gauntlet in. Like, they're saying, no, we're going after this, too. I guess, but I feel like... They would pack a stadium if they said, we're going to start doing Splatoon esports. They would pack... I mean, if it was Nintendo getting behind it, people would show up for if that. If Nintendo put money into it. Yes. That's what has been missing. If, if Nintendo took $5 million off of the bazillions of dollars they're making off of Pokemon Go or yeah. whatever, yeah. and said, we're going to fund Melee for the year with $5 million, we're going to spread that across a bunch of tournaments, yeah. you will see that scene grow. Yeah. You will see those stadiums fill I up I think with more Splatoon people. actually would work quite well. I think that that's a, a fun game to watch. If there's, I mean, there has, and, there and has to be infrastructure and money. Yeah, it can't just be sure. a cool game. There has to be a league behind yeah. it. And yeah. that's what Nintendo hasn't done much of. Okay. So I thought that that was also, in the scheme of this very brief trailer, a yeah. little bit like, what what's that about? Are you just well, gotta, trying to be cool here? It's very superficial. And one of the things that, that makes it all kind of weird is that this doesn't, it, this kind of already exists, but it doesn't exist. You know, you can already get con uh, controllers for your iPad or your Android device and set up something on, an, on a, an airplane tray and play games like you're playing off of a console. I've been doing that for years, yeah. and I'm the only one ever on an airplane. <laughs> you know, I go up and down the aisle, and it's always Candy Crush or, or you know. And you've got your Steel Series yeah, like with I'm, your iPad like, out. Like, I'm full I'm fidelity, it. you know, playing NBA 2K, which is one of the games that they showed off. And you can already do that, but it's not being adopted. I mean, there are lots of these companies trying to bring out this sort of console on the road type of experience, but it's not being adopted. And frankly, the reason why it's not being adopted is because a company like Nintendo or PlayStation or Xbox hasn't put their foot into it and said, we're doing this and it's going to happen. Now, I, my big question is, will this tablet with the Switch run anything other than what the games are? You know, like, is it going to be more more of an yeah, all-in-one device is than it just the game system? Have an Android sort of side to it or an iOS kind of side to it? They're obviously getting involved with with mobile. 
Um, I, you know, I'm excited about this functionality and about the, I, I've been on board with this kind of idea for about five years already. I dig this very much and I've wanted Nintendo to, to move into this direction, take us up in fidelity. But is it just going to be a closed loop system and you can only play the Nintendo stuff or is there going to be more to this story? I mean, my guess is it's going to be closed loop because that's what they always do. Mm -hmm. They are a closed garden. They do not say we're going to let all kinds of different software run on our products. They've never done that. I would be surprised if that's the step they're taking here. What I'm curious about is if you're going to create a mobile system yeah. that is this big high-fidelity tablet, what's the battery life? Yeah. How, uh, how, how are those graphics stacking up? power-wise to the other ones. And I know that always feels like, oh, we're just talking graphics and Nintendo plays a different game. Yeah. But the truth is... Compared to the other consoles? Compared to the other consoles and compared to what I can get on my iPad yeah, and what I, mean, I can that, get on other that's, mobile that's devices. That's compared question. to everything. Yeah, what does it look like? That's Because you're carving and carving and carving again. And, right. You know, Nintendo's got no play if they're in the hardware game other than to say we... And that's why the Switch works as a fantastic brand. Right, because I can pop that out there and make the switch. To, it's so, it writes itself, yeah. which makes sense. And I like hearing that, even just you saying, I was playing this on the Switch, or the, the lady brought the Switch over. That sounds cool. Well, it's finally a real word, yeah. as opposed to them making up words and putting lots of vowels together and us being like, uh, yeah. like it's not called the Switch with a bunch of eyes. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was, that's nice. <laughs> so we got that. But it is concerning, you know. It, it is a little concerning thinking about the horsepower. You're right. It's like, how quickly could PlayStation, if this looks like it's going to like light the world on fire in its first two months, how quickly could PlayStation make a, uh, a PlayStation 4 tablet that allowed yeah. you to, t to log into all of your games and worked with a DualShock 4 or Xbox? Well, that's a huge... You just brought up the other big uh, issue, or not issue, but unknown yeah. that I have, which is that the big area for me that Nintendo's really been struggling to keep up with is, is in the online presence. Yeah. And in making it... So it's easy to find friends online and play with people online yeah. and congregate in games but online. More importantly, and this is really going to turn off a lot of people, there have been tons of purchases on the eShop for both the 3DS and the two Wii platforms now. If those aren't portable yeah. to this new machine, right, right. that is going to be infuriating because we own these things. And Nintendo has been able to make a lot of money reselling us games that we've loved. You know, in this NES yeah, but isn't thing. that true for the PS2 into the PS3? Yes, some of it. Yeah, but the fact that you know the Xbox has uh, the uh, the portability from the PS uh, from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One is a huge deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the PlayStation 4, you buy stuff on the PSP and you got it on your right. on your Vita. There's interoperability there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, there is some elegance there, and there has been buy one on one platform. You can play it on the 3DS and Wii U kind of functionality. But a lot of those classics have been bought for those platforms yeah. by a lot of us. If we have to buy them again now for the Switch, that's going to be that's going to piss off a lot of people. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like the 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 back end online integration between not only your existing accounts but just how you have an identity with this thing. Yeah, that's been something that they've struggled with from their entire, right. really my entire experience right. with their systems from the Wii, the Wii U. I don't have like a username. I don't know anybody's username. Yeah. I don't have like friends. Like I know, you know, Don Fubar, that's Jose, your Batwing. Like I yeah. see people online on the Xbox and on the PS4 and I know who they are. I can see what they're playing. It's easy to join matches, go in and out. Yeah. With these, with their other systems, they just haven't set up that infrastructure right. correctly or in a way that makes sense. Well, and that's what all this deal with DNA has supposed to have been about. And we, you know, we see DNA just they closed their their U.S. operations just this week. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, uh, and you know. Yeah, what is that going to mean, right? Yeah, I mean that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. It's a huge deal. And now, how does this transition and move into this new space? And frankly, their Nintendo is in mobile now. So how can they just ignore mobile when you have a mobile? game platform like this. Two. I mean, because right? they're also making Super Mario Run. They are right. now going in with, with, with iOS development. They're going to be going in with uh, Switch development. My question, obviously, is what happens to the 3DS? Does that I, become I think, sunset after I, I think Pokemon? We, they're sunsetting. After the, after the Pokemon I, games. And it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense to have one machine that, that you can carry your library around with. I think that's totally apropos, and I yeah. think it totally makes sense. But it would have been... And who, this might come. Maybe there is limited functionality with those controllers, and you can attach them to an, any iPad, and you can get some of your library and play on some kind of Nintendo ecosystem on iPad or Android or something. 
maybe there's going to be some tie that way. It does open the door to a bunch of unbelievably cool types of scenarios and also some future proofing that way. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, honestly, if, if the resolution that we're seeing out of this, these little tastes of software right now doesn't appear to, to kind of make anybody buckle at the knees thinking about how it's going to be much better than uh, PS4 Pro or no, the Scorpio. I don't think it's going to be better. I mean, it's the NVIDIA, NVIDIA Tegra, I think, line. Right. So I, I don't think we're going to see this going leaps and bounds beyond what we're seeing on other Within consoles. a year, this stuff is going to look dated if that's the sort of cap of the, the visual horsepower. That's never been Nintendo's concern. I get that, but it's also going to be a... Uh, a, you know, a thing that the competitors can point to. So if Nintendo doesn't have some kind of, uh, you know, roadmap to making all of this stronger, I mean, maybe that, that tablet is something that they can replace on a, you know, on a year or two I, years I don't know, yeah, but that's going to be a difficult upsell. I think we're, I mean, to segue us into maybe the next topic that we yeah. want to talk about, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is not going to be appearing on this, at least not in the it press releases. Announced, yeah. Right, hasn't been announced, yeah. so... I think that issue, which is always the issue for me and Nintendo, it's not the quality of their hardware. I think they build good hardware. They build good controllers. Yep. They build Dependable, games Dependable, reliable, always working. Even old Game Boy Advances, you flip they them just, open, they're, they're, they're still good at, up. They're yeah. good at making little cool devices. <laughs> yes. But they have a problem getting enough compelling software out there on a steady enough you know, diet yeah. over the course of a year. And I don't know if and what I think this system has going for it more than anything is the fact that it's launching with Zelda mm -hmm. and the fact that this Zelda game, based on what we played at E3, looks like that tablet is absolutely part of the game. Like, yeah. you know, he's got a tablet. He's walking around with a tablet. Uh, hopefully, we'll see some cool interoperability there in the way that the game works with the tablet. And, and if that works and really flies out of the gate, you know, a couple million of these things come flying off shelves because of Zelda and because of the new technology – we got to get that critical mass out there if I'm Nintendo so that we start to see a really consistent flood of software. That is their problem. That has been their problem for the entirety of the Wii U. That was their problem. Well, hopefully all of this, because we've been reporting on this quite a bit over the last few years, all of these different sort of divisions and directions within Nintendo to kind of monetize from different sources, mobile, theme parks, you know, movies, all this stuff that's coming – Hopefully, all of that gets funneled because this is a company that first and foremost is always, uh, you know, in reinvested into what they do, their core stuff. They're not, an, you know, making televisions. They're not doing other. They're they're not an electronics firm. They're a I video would game. Pro company. I would buy. I would buy a Nintendo TV. I, all of us would, or a I Nintendo would, would. phone, right? But hopefully, what this means though is they will knuckle down and just keep cranking us games and putting, uh, you know, some kinds of exclusive arrangements and deals together that make it you know, so utterly compelling to pick up the system, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and to include it in our in our library. I mean, what's the last awesome Metroid we played? I know. And this would have been the time to show us. You know, maybe we got another Switch uh, you know, I'm marketing sort of push next month or something like that. But this is now is the time to show us a new Metroid. Yeah. Now is the time All to of show them. us They've got to come out with all the guns. Yeah, all the guns. All yeah. The guns. Maybe we take a break on Star Fox because the last one was just okay, you know. But yeah, we need to see some stuff that uh, we've been missing for a while. Some new stuff too. Look, yeah. you know, I, I've been you know also raging about the fact that Nintendo used to be a character mm -hmm. factory and they created all these indelible f characters and they yeah. stopped. Yeah. And then last year or two years ago, whenever it was, two years ago I guess now. Yeah. Splatoon. Yeah. Was that last year? Year before? Uh, 2015. 2015. So last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, Splatoon, they finally said, okay, we're going to try. We're going to give it awesome. another And it was a great game. Yeah. So, like, let's see more of that. Let's see more of that ingenuity. Let's see more of that young Nintendo, fresh design team. Some of those folks start making cool new stuff yeah. that makes sense for this thing yeah. that isn't also just Metroid. Like, I'm stoked for Metroid. I want to see that stuff. But I want to see stuff that makes me go, wow, this is... This is something I can only get here. It's really cool. It makes me want to buy it. Yeah. And it's not just another Mario 64, which will be cool and great that yeah. they're going to redo another one of those. But... But 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 new and fresh. I think we need that. What did you think of the uh, the hardware design, the way that it looked? I thought it looked rad. Yeah. I thought it looked really cool. I think the again, it's really we talked a lot about it, and it's hard to talk. This is all kind just of just from a three. This is all garbage because yeah. it was like a three minute trailer. <laughs> but like. You know, the controllers, the split controller thing when the dude was on the plane, which is like one of the only use cases that I saw that I'm like, I would actually do that. And yeah. I will not be at the basketball court, but yeah. I will be on a plane with it. Yep. Um, 
I didn't love that. They looked small. You can clump them all together, though. Yeah. And like, make it a regular controller. I, it's a little hard to see how that or, stuff or works. Or you can flip them sideways and use them like mini Wii modes, which is kind of cool. I have little Donald Trump hands, so <laughs> this is not a big deal for me, but I, I don't know. It's so hard to talk about until hardware. Until we physically touch until you, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't really tell how big the thing is in my bag. Like, yeah. is that screen going to get scratched? Is there a case? Like, all those little weird things that, you don't know until you get it. That Switch case market is going to make people a lot of money, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nintendo just, and third party. Just like make a Waluigi and yeah. sell a billion of them. <laughs> Uh, I want one for sure. I can't wait for this thing to come out and to wait play. Wait for the price. You should, what if it's six hundred dollars? I can't wait. I, you know, I, you're wealthy though. You have, well, a lot, you have all kinds. We've of money. been wanting Nintendo to to release new hardware for a, a while. You know, and this has been a hard year to get super excited about Nintendo stuff this year. You know, yeah. there's been a few wonderful things this year, but there certainly has been that absence of amazing, gotta play it, gotta get it kind of. Vibe. Got to got to catch them all. Got to ca- well, Pokemon, Pokemon is got to yeah. catch them all. Yeah, that's been working. Be a thing that's uh, but yeah, we've needed some great Nintendo news, and I think I think for the most part we got it. But certainly it raises some issues and some concerns. A good right? start, but of some big, big, big questions. Yeah, the, the battery, the power, really again. The, the, the practicality also to me, like I yeah. love the idea of cool. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take this thing with me, but like, I I, I don't know. Um, I used to think that you're going to want a, a specific device for all your needs. I used to be a believer in that. I yeah. can't remember what that's called tech-wise. It yeah. escapes me. But yeah. if you want a phone, get the best phone. Don't worry what else it does. If you want an awesome game system, get the best portable game system. Yeah. But the world has moved in a different direction. Yeah. It is an all-in-one world. Yeah. And those questions about the real need to travel with this thing for a mass market, not just the hardcore you know, 8 million people who bought a Wii U or whatever, but yeah. like beyond that, I, I want to see what it offers. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be about software. Yeah. It's going to be about uh, its unique qualities. Right. You know, because if, if it's just a screen that plays Nintendo stuff, I don't know if that's enough. It's going to just, it's going to get Nintendo fans, and I don't think it's going to go that far past it. And they, yeah. need, to, they need to get to that original Wii past yeah. the gamers and into the public consciousness yep. again. Yeah, now I, I, it'll be interesting also to see what this device does for the third-party controller market for the iPad and the Android, because suddenly it legitimizes it in a big way, right? So there could be a whole boom. And Moga, Moga, yeah. Moga 2. <laughs> Moga, of course, Moga I've been three. saying that for a long time. Moga 4. We really haven't seen that too much. Uh, okay, well, let's talk about the other big uh, reveal today, which was uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. It was uh, not a, not a uh, big surprising reveal, but holy crap, is it beautiful, huh? We wore Western shirts just because kind of, right? of yeah. that. I never wear plaid except for days like this. Yeah. First day wearing right. plaid. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think? Were you uh, agape? Is that, is that a word? Uh, I, I sound sound kind of vaguely right. pornographic uh, when you say yeah. it. But is your mouth just uh, um, wide you, open, hitting the floor, jaw on the floor no, kind of? No, no. But, I mean, part of it was because we I was in the middle of writing about the Switch. Right. It was like, right. It was The timing was insane. Yeah. It was like the Switch, and we're all like, oh, my God, the Switch. Wait, there's a <laughs> Redemption yeah, yeah. trailer. Um, cool for the day, but a little unfortunate maybe for... It could have been nice if there were yeah. a few more hours in between there, but Nintendo just kind of came in at the last minute and said, here yeah. you go. Here's, yeah, your, yeah. here's your 7 a.m. Um, okay, here's what I think. It looks great. It's pretty. We know it's, it's, it's Rockstar doing an open-world game. It's going to look great, yeah. and that trailer looked great. Um, All on this current gen. There's no porting from PS3 or 360 this time. And I think that's going to have an impact on the visual fidelity. You can tell, I mean, the scene with the buffalo and the train. And it's got a Skyrim vibe, doesn't it? Like when you look at, the, remember our Ooh. first the images of Skyrim and just how, you know, that change from the 360. Uh, no, it was, our, what the hell was it? It was like second generation of yeah. 360. From Morrowind. From Oblivion. Or Oblivion. Yeah. Yes, not Morrowind. Yeah. yeah. From Oblivion to Skyrim, that leap, that kind of fidelity sort of tightening of the screws. It was also, I think, with, with Skyrim, Skyrim at least, it was the environment, which was wintry, and it was yeah. these giant mountains and stuff, and it really lent itself to looking great. I yeah. think this also, with its giant open plains and vistas and its kind of dusty cowboy towns, it looks really great, yeah. and it's it's uh, it, it's a little more impressive seeing the sunset with bison running behind it yeah. than just another city. Yeah. So I think that served it really well. Um, also, the animations of the cowboy kind of adjusting himself on the. D- horse, I mean, it's gonna it's look just, it's gonna look great, right? It's ridiculous. So here's the only thing I was sort of let down by, which yeah. is, uh, I mean, it was a little over a minute, minute and a half, or minute and fifteen seconds, or something. Yeah. And uh, 
I'm sure right now, as I'm speaking, there's some nerd at Kotaku, Jason or someone, <laughs> writing up like 50, 49 things we discovered in this minute trailer <laughs> by like zeroing in on some dude's foot. Like, look at that shoe. That's a moccasin. That means you're going to be fighting Native Americans. Like, yeah. I, I'm not there, so yeah. I don't know what all that is. I'm not analyzing it. But I wish there were some bigger moment reveals where I could say, I now know something I'm going to be able to do in this game yeah. that I haven't been able to do in an open world game or I haven't been able to do This in is a game. company that excels at mystery. Though. Yes, this they love it. This is a company that just uh, is the long play yeah. on getting us hyped for something and then dropping it and then also supporting that thing for months and months and months afterwards. Blue afterward. Balls. Blue Balls. This company should be renamed <laughs> Blue Balls. But they, they know they're their value they know their qualities they know what they represent to this industry you know they are a very very unique publisher dude and they had a tweet that 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 made their stock price go up it's incredible they tweeted and their stock price went up well it, they not they, a lot of video game companies can tweet they don't one rest. tweet and yeah. have your stock price go they up. don't rest though they don't just sort of sit back and and sort of phone this stuff in you no. know even the the recent like the motorcycle sort of update to GTA Online, like the the value proposition for believing in a Rockstar game back to the consumer is very well warranted. You know, like so we can sit here and sort of you know tick off the minutes and months until we wait for this thing, and I think it's pretty safe to say we're not going to be disappointed by this sucker. You know? Well, you never know. Okay, look, you never know. Anything no. can happen. Anything can happen making a video game. It's hard to make video games. Anything can happen to these companies. Uh, games can launch with online components that break and ruin launches. We've yeah. seen that a million times. So it's I can't just sit here and say, go pre-order it. I don't think anyone should ever pre-order no. a video game. No, no, no. I'm not saying I, that either. I, but the, the fact that this was the company, I mean, Scott and I gave, uh, when we did our top 100 video games of all time, we gave it to GTA 3 because of what it meant for yeah. the future of the business yeah. and what it sort of talked about with the potential of what games can be in many different ways. Was Super Mario Brothers number two? Yes. Okay. Yeah, or Super Mario 64, I think, was, because it was the okay. transition from the 2D design. I'll have to rewatch, I'll have to rewatch it so I can send you some uh, but all, mail, yeah. some <laughs> troll, you guys. <laughs> really? But, but Grand Theft Auto 3, I think, was a bit Half of a... Half-Life was eight. Um, I can, yeah, I know, it's down there. But it was a bit of a contentious choice because it wasn't perfect. It was just a a perfect transitional moment for this industry, you know, and they have stayed the course with yep. their mature rated, you know, uh, sometimes incredibly offensive, sometimes uh, off message or off, uh, you know, off point, I think, with some of the game choices and some of the content choices that they've made. Uh, certainly the belligerence of, uh, of the environment of how these games get made has sort of filtered out into the world and we know how crushingly difficult it has been for, you know, rock star employees to sort of maintain that quality bar. But God damn, these games, you just can't ignore them. Yeah. You know, they really matter to the world, you know, yes. and they drop and they matter. And, you know, Westerns, and we've talked about this incessantly about Westerns with relation to Red Dead, they were a dead genre across the board. Like nobody was talking about Westerns. Suddenly, we have an HBO series again. I mean, they, they also had the fantastic Dead, uh, Deadwood, which probably played into Red Dead getting that sequel anyways. But, I mean, I think we can probably credit anybody's interest in, in Westerns, again, in large part, to Rockstar. Well, I think it helped, but I think we are also seeing a wave, not only Westworld, we're seeing uh, The Dark Tower being made into a movie, yeah. which is sort of a Western. We're seeing The Magnificent Seven top the box office. Westerns in general have sort of swung back around. I don't know if it's because of Red Dead or if Red Dead caught the beginning of that wave or, or, or what. I will say this. Rockstar is, even though I said they should be renamed Blue Ball, they, they actually do have the correct name. Yeah, They're one of the few publishers that... that Act the way what their name is, right? They're not you know, visceral games. Don't always make visceral <laughs> games, right? But like Rockstar, they're they're all kind of assholes. Mm -hmm. You kind of feel like they all walk around like assholes. The Housers are kind of legendary as being sort of assholes, and, <laughs> and yet and they probably couldn't trademark asshole games. <laughs> no, right? And yet they are immensely talented. They are Kanye West in that sense. Like yeah. people pay attention yeah. to what they do. Yeah. I, by the way, I'm not a Kanye fan. I'm just throwing it out there as yeah. like that example of like it doesn't matter how shitty they 
act or whatever they do, yeah. their art is is acknowledged immediately by right. the world. Right. They do what they want. They don't show up at E3 ever. Yeah. They do things. They just come in with a logo in the middle of October, in the middle of the busiest season. Yeah. Of the year, and they steal all the thunder away from, like, by the way, Battlefield 1 is coming out. Yeah. By the way, Skylanders. I mean, there's big properties coming out. Yeah. Rockstar farts off a tweet, and it, like, changes <laughs> the entire conversation. Like, they have power and, 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 and that very few and, people. And there is no surprise few that, companies do. that it's there. Like, yeah. we knew it was coming. Yeah. We just wanted to know when, and suddenly we got it, you know? So I think, I think when you ask, what do I think about it, I think it's – Existing, yeah. it's gonna happen. Yes, that's enough for me right now. Is Red Dead Redemption your favorite Rockstar game? I don't, I don't think so. I think even though you're right, it's dated. My relationship with Grand Theft Auto Three was really special because I, I felt like that game. I played that game at a preview event. This yeah. was when they still, when Rockstar would still do I preview. Probably events. was at that one. Yeah. They had Smuggler's Run. Yeah. And Grand it was Theft at Auto a Three hotel just down the street around from right here wasn't no, it? No, so okay. this was in the middle of like Arizona okay. or something on this base. Oh. Oh, okay, no, I went to a different one. Yeah, or Nevada. I don't remember where it was. It was in like a or New Mexico. It was in some sort of like kind of vaguely southwestern state. Yeah, I don't remember where. And they had it was a kind of a weird army base almost that we were on. And we ended up doing some like buggy driving oh, for, for I, Smuggler's I, Run. Zoe went on that. Trip. Yes, yeah. Zoe was there. Yes. Zoe Flower was yeah. there. Yeah, and they had us play Grand Theft Auto Three for the first time. And right. we had Smuggler's Run to play for like. An, an hour, and then we had Grand Theft game. Auto 3 to play for like an hour. Yeah. Okay? And none of us really knew what it was because we had played Grand Theft Auto 2 and it was like not yes. what this was. Yeah. I just remember like hopping into a, an ambulance and then the game turned into like you're now an ambulance driver and you're like driving around the open world and you got a sense of the open world. And in wherever the, we were... You didn't have the narrative kind of none sort of, of flush. You didn't know what the story was going to be about or how deep it was going to go. I just remember after playing that very brief hour or two hours or whatever I played of the game, yeah. I wrote a preview that was like the first time in my career that I had ever written a preview that I really believed every single thing I was saying. Yeah. Like, none of this is promised. None of this is coming. This is, you can drive any, you can go anywhere you want in a video game and yeah. these in your, and you can shoot and get out of the car and get in the car and in the, in the you know, room and out of the room. It really reset my brain. And I think since then, even though Red Dead is probably the most stylistic of their games that I, I like stylistically the most. Yes. I think GTA 3 is the one that is in Yeah, it lived up to nearest the nearest and dearest. It lived up to the promises that they were making pre-release. It didn't and, give a shit about and, anything. Well, and then after so that So punk rock that game. After that game, all of those press events, all of that access, all of those interviews, done. We never got to, Oh yeah, gone. We never got to see these people ever nope. again, basically. No, it was like Geronimo in yeah. the desert yeah. in this thing and he's like, "Here's this game." And we're yeah. like, "Cool." And then like, yeah, a year later, you couldn't get Geronimo. <laughs> you couldn't get anybody. You couldn't you couldn't triplicate couldn't you to sign things. But I remember GTA 3 comes out and I've said this before in some of the podcasts and stuff, and I probably said it in our top 100, but I played the game, could not believe what I was playing. I sat my wife down. She, I said, just drive any way that you want to. She couldn't believe she was running over hookers, and it was just like so wrong and weird, but she was like, oh, look at this control. Look what you can do. I went out and bought a few copies, and I gave them to colleagues at work. I said, guys, this is the future. This is it. This is... This is what games have been leading up to. This is the potential of games becoming realized right here. This is it. And it's all going to be different from now. This is, and it was. And it, it certainly has been. But Red Dead, I think, really was the first time where, and I think they did it again with GTA V, but Red Dead was really the first time where the story, the narrative, and the open world uh, activities just meshed in such an amazing way. And the... Yeah. the the cultural benefit, you know, the, the artistic, cultural sort of win of the experience was just this wave washing over me. The performances, yeah. the different, the variety of gameplay, the music, the, the, music, the yeah. sweeping kind of vistas when you're writing. I mean, it, was, it definitely had a lot more of those dramatic moments than GTA, yeah. which, again, tend to be driving around a different city. Yeah. Uh, this was not that, and it was a different experience. I, I think you're right in, in that sense. It's probably the, the, the coolest of their games. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was my favorite only because also at the time there were a lot of open world games I was playing and that yeah. was kind of a really hot time for Assassin's Creed and a bunch of other games were coming out kind yeah. of all the time and there was a little bit of exhaustion I felt like more icons on a map. Yeah. I think I'm going to 
play it again. I want to go back to it before this game comes out to yep. kind of refresh, and I have a feeling I'm going to have a new appreciation for it. This would be um, a great time for Rockstar to make a PC version of that game. And, I, I and wouldn't doubt a remaster. That. I would be incredible. I wouldn't, or a remaster, I wouldn't yeah. doubt a remaster before this thing comes out. I that think that could happen. That would be amazing. We are playing, uh, or have been playing an open world game while in San Francisco with mm -hmm. Ubisoft at uh, their Watch Dogs 2 event, and mm -hmm. probably can't talk too much about it, but uh, they've really done an amazing job with getting San Francisco into a game. And yeah. it's super fun to, we, we just before we came to visit you, we were just down at Fisherman's Wharf and just, it, you forget when you're not a tourist, you know, when you come here so often, you forget that when you go down there, these, these are destinations for a reason. It's absolutely gorgeous down there. Yeah. And it's yeah. so cool to think that in, in a month, we're gonna be able to create all kinds of crazy havoc you know, there, in that game here. There are bison in Golden Gate Park just like the bison that are in Red Dead Redemption 2. So maybe the watchdogs will have some cowboy, uh, <laughs> they will have a cowboy sequence. Are there seriously bison in Yeah, Golden there's Gate buffalo Park? in Golden Gate Park. Holy crap. Maybe, I don't know, bison, buffalo, I'm not sure which it is. One of them you eat, the they, other one not so much. How do they survive with all the people that go through there? They just stay the hell away? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're hidden in the trees. Uh, really? Where they climb up. <laughs> I don't know, caves? I don't know, dude. There's just like herds of buffalo. I swear to God. That's was, incredible. Or a herd of buffalo. Okay. I swear to God. The last surviving herd of buffalo in California. Right I, might, I might have been high <laughs> yeah. when I saw them. Okay. Well, I can't remember. There was one other big announcement it's today. Real. Is it it's real? real? It's real. It's real. Yeah. Blake Googled. He did the Google. Uh, Google uh, millennial video game parties and see if uh, hip, <laughs> hipsters don't do that. Play, play video don't. Games. You're going to get so much pornography. <laughs> see how on point the you're going to get porn all over your phone. You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> don't do it. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Logan, which was the other uh, yeah, yeah number three, the other checkpoint that we had to talk about today. Uh, I love this trailer today. This was my favorite thing of the day. Everybody looks very old and beat up, but holy crap, does that look great. The huh? other things look cool. Yeah. But this trailer yeah. was, I think, the best trailer. Johnny Cash. Amazing. Old Wolverine. Yeah. Old ass Wolverine. Yeah. Old ass Professor X. Little girl. The Last of Us 2. Yeah. Like, I love all these things. I, I love know. I love Patrick Stewart being kind of... Eh, just and totally beat up. Everybody beat up. just looks, Everyone looks beat up. Now, yeah. uh, Victor, I don't know the comic world... Um, kind of lore behind why this particular beat is happening yeah. in the in the film. I, I imagine you do. I, so what's the setup I, here? I kind of do because I'm not a, uh, I, I'm a Spider-Man guy and an Iron Man guy, I think, before I go into, I've read a bunch of Wolverine books. You but should I, try Batman too if you like those other ones. I, that's where I started with all of that. But I've been in the in the Marvel space. The new Star Wars books are incredible. Batman, is, he's also called the Dark Knight yes, and the King's Crusader, and he has a belt with Weapons. I have read Old Man Logan, and it's an amazing book. This is sort of uh, the last tale of Wolverine's life, and I think there's probably some connections to some of that, where he has a lot of flashback stuff and kind of gives you a whole sort of tale of... Uh, is that a graphic novel, or yeah. is that a series it, of... Well, they collect it all. I think it was okay. a series of books, and then it's collected as a okay. graphic novel. It's definitely worth picking up. So I think they're borrowing from Old Man Logan and sort of his finality. Uh, but they're also picking up off of X23, which is an, a mutant that I think is partially Logan's daughter, that is, uh, or half daughter, or something like that. And so she becomes this super powerful uh, healing. Spoiler alert! Healing that capability girl. mutant with uh, mutant. with uh, claws. Uh, so, uh, and I believe that's probably where they're going to go now. That uh, that Hugh Jackman is going to kind of hang up the claws and go away. You know, there's talk of, uh, who's the guy that played Matt Max? What's his name again? Tom? Uh, Tom Hardy. Tom, Tom Hardy. Yeah, there's talk of yeah. Tom Hardy maybe taking on the role of, of Wolverine. I think he'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's pretty hard. I think they need to take a break on their Wolverine and let Hugh Jackman have his goodbye and his moment uh, and maybe come back maybe if they do the full, because I don't think they're going to really do Old Man Logan. I think they're just going to kind of tease us in that direction a bit. Mm -hmm. He could still come back in 10 years or 15 years or what, 20 years. A lot of other superheroes to cover yeah. beyond Wolverine. Like it's right. been this weird but an X two three Wolverine could be thing. really rad. I you know, I love the X universe. I really do. Yeah. You know because yeah. once I and honestly I feel like X Men as a as a property when I'm reading the books is more interesting than just the Wolverine story. I love Wolverine. He's a great character. He's incredible. But I I think his sort of combination in this weird collection of 
you know, altruistic heroes and virtuous heroes and, and uh, people that are really damaged. And, and then Wolverine comes in and he's kind of like the Han Solo of all of that. I think he's an amazing uh, contributor to that space, but he's a little less interesting on his own. But I think it's interesting to split off and now we're going to have a, uh, a young female version of that that character with some of those traits, some of those similarities. I thought the trailer just did a great job of making what is sort of a burnt out character for people who maybe aren't huge Wolverine fans, but yeah. just like like movies or superhero movies. Like we've seen him do this kind of rah thing yeah. like so many times now. It's gotten a little, I'm a little desensitized. I mean, compared to Deadpool or yeah. a new character where you're like, wow, this is fresh and new and I don't really know everything about this character yeah. or I do and I want to see it come to life. With Wolverine, like he's been in every one of these movies basically, and yeah. he's been a focal point. So you've explored so much of him already that and there is a point where you're like, I don't really know if I'm excited about watching this again. Yeah. But the trailer, this trailer, and this treatment of this character right. makes me interested because it doesn't look like it's going to be the same beats of him, you know. Just it like, looks more grounded and real. But Mangold yeah. did the last movie, and I thought it was pretty good. I liked the idea that he went to Japan and and uh, that was the Japan one. Yeah, that was okay. pretty cool. Except yeah. it, it sort of went off the rails when it he's did. fighting the giant silver the robots, uh, the robot. centurion or whatever it was called. Yeah. The yeah. Silver Samurai. And yeah, it wasn't. A yeah, it, it got a little. Cr I mean, it was true to the books, but it just felt a little weird. And you're right. I mean, Wolverine, as portrayed in the movies, he's had way more, uh, you know, interesting kind of uh, side stories and, and side roots in uh, uh, in the comic books. They've been able to kind of flesh that character out a little bit more. But in the in the movies, he just gets angry and he starts killing people with his claws, <laughs> and right. and we just see the slow boil, and then suddenly he goes fucking crazy. But you know, I loved. Wolverine in Days of uh, Days of Future Past. That uh -huh. was phenomenal. That where was he, where he went he back in back. time. Right, it was yes. incredible. That was, that, that yeah. was a great sort right. of you know arc for the character. You know, kind of with that older maturity, understanding that he's become part of a super team, and the younger version of himself would have just never believed that. Well, at and, all. It, and it hammered home his sort of immortality and the mm -hmm. sense of his immortality. Even even though he was you know kind of time traveling, like you got the sense of him being this kind of constant yeah right he is the constant force that ties together this universe yes and i like that and what i love about this trailer is it feels like that's coming to some sort of conclusion or there's an evolution there where he has to turn into something else it reminded me obviously a little of the new god of war reboot where yeah. it's like something has happened to this character that has advanced him right and that's We're also both hard. dads and the minute that you have that passing on which is an inevitability, I think, in some way. Either yeah. you're going to be somewhere along the line, every life that ages needs to interact with some youthful life listen, and pass on something. Listen, right? I, my kid yesterday yeah. came into the office. I have an office out behind my house. He walked in. I was playing Skylanders Imaginators. Had them all lined up. Crash Bandicoot, Cortex. All nice and neat. And They're all sitting there. I'm warping them in and out. He walked in. What you doing? And I'm like, well, shit. I'm like, I should have turned it off. I'm never. If he's anywhere in the house, he's got to turn everything off and like go dark. But no, he came in and started grabbing them, started fucking around with them. And I'm like, can't. <sighs> Calm down. Like, are any of them rare? <sighs> so he made this stuff first. So what do I do? <sighs> but you know what? Like, in the like 20 minutes he was out there, I'm playing with the Imaginator, which is a created character. Yep. So I'm not really even using I the statues, just had right? Same the statues vibe with are Ruby. kind of b bullshit this, yeah. this time around because yeah. you're creating your own character. The Imaginators are so fun, right? And I started to let it go. Yeah. And he went over to the shelf and he grabbed some Disney Infinity characters, which RIP, I'm going to take off the shelf soon. Yeah. But he started like playing with those and grabbed some of the new Skylanders and the old Skylanders and just was bashing them together and messing around with them. And like I kind of breathed out and I allowed it to happen. Wow. And to me, to me, that is like Wolverine yeah. not killing the little girl, yeah. <laughs> fucking around with dad's bag or whatever. Like he didn't go, Gah! like he's like, okay, okay. So I feel like I had, I'm having this personal growth by allowing my son to it play happens. with all my toys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I get it. So that's yeah. why I'm interested. Maybe that's yeah. it. Maybe I'm just interested in I, watching this. My, uh, uh, my uh, temperature goes up when we play uh, Lego Dimensions a little bit and Ruby knocks over a character or loses a piece. Because, <laughs> oh, what did you do that for? <laughs> well, because they're all over the place and you just want that one little piece and that one little piece will finish the care. And it's just like, and she knows it too, right? She's like, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. And she just sees me going beat red trying to keep it in. We, why did we lose that little piece? We, we, everything stops. We got to find that little piece and I won't put let this him thing together. I won't let him touch that. And he's yeah. dying to. He's got all these other characters 
to play with all these yeah. other toys. He sees the Le- uh, Lego Dimension stuff, and he's like, "Can I just? Uh, I want to see what this is." I'm like, "You don't even. You're not even allowed to fucking look at it." <laughs> well, next year, good that luck. That shit's gonna go right here <laughs> yeah. or fucking there, and it's gone forever. Next year, good luck. Because and honestly, there's nothing better than your kid looking at the screen and packing and putting it together. A sad but true statement. It's there's amazing. nothing better well, than your kid the, looking at the screen. Well, looking at the screen and, and putting a Lego <laughs> thing together and and that's her, that's her. There's character. nothing better than my son staring at an iPad while <laughs> yeah. we're outside. Nothing better. <laughs> that's good parenting, folks. There it is. Good parenting. With, good parenting with Ben and Vic. There it is, right there. Basement. Toys and screens. Uh, and how do we get onto that off of Wolverine? I guess that's. That's that's our closest approximation to being uh, yeah like uh, like uh, good guardians, fathers like Wolverine guardians yes uh, uh, yeah. helping life us. lessons yes those help, are our versions of life lessons helping right uh, yes what do you what do you call it a uh, what do you call it when you're uh, not a concierge what do you call it when you uh, mm. uh, 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 chaperone yes we are chaperoning our children mm. uh, through the world just like Logan will be just like Logan will Logan, be chaperoning yes. this little demonic and, and training. His little girl to uh, slice and dice. Yeah, I yeah. liked also yeah. in that trailer. Not a ton of action and stuff. It yeah. was like a little bit of action, but it's really not. It the, the vibe I get is there is 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 a story looks, and a narrative and a looks thing like a happening Western. here. It looks like a western. It ties really well into our uh, Red Dead sort of theme day. And in the Nintendo Switch trailer, Mario at one point very quickly was was running through what looked like an old west town. Well, there you go. It's a Western-themed Thursday, uh, and it definitely felt like Mangold was uh, sort of back on track and grounding this and making it more realistic. Hopefully, we don't have any Silver Samurais in this sucker. Hopefully, it doesn't get too esoteric and weird. They they kind of have to do that a little bit, though, because it's it's the X-Men verse, you know, and they have to go yeah, into the yeah. into the comic lore a little bit and play uh, pay a little bit of an homage, but... It did feel like a three, 310 to Yuma is probably my favorite Mangold film. I think he is a very solid filmmaker. And you guys should check that movie out. It has Russell Crowe and uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, Batman. Christian Bale, yeah. Christian Batman. Christian Batman, yeah. <laughs> Christian Batman. I think you can find Christian Batman somewhere around here in San Francisco just wandering the streets. Christian, Praise be Christian, Christian Batman. Jewish Batman. <laughs> Some people used to call me that in high school. Jewish Batman. Christian Batman. I love it. Well, 310 to Yuma is fantastic. And I, I hope that that is, the, uh, that is the tonal sort of precursor to what we're going to get out of Wolverine. You know? I'm excited. That trailer was awesome. I mean, yeah. all these trailers had something to dig. What a day. What a day. Yes. And yesterday we actually it's got only... the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 tease. And Did you see yes, that? Yes. Groot with the leather jacket. Yes. It looks incredible. So rad, man. I'm on board. This is a good this, this is a good little collection of things. Yeah. Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. This Wolverine thing. Yes. Nintendo Switch. Red Dead. This is, I am in support of this particular group of franchises. We have a lot to look forward to already in 2017. And, uh, yeah. and you know, like the hype has just begun. Like many, many more things are going to start trickling in. And, and still many big games sort of on our plate. Have you played Battlefield 1 yet? I, yeah, I'm about halfway through the campaign, the single-player campaign. I, so boy, I, I like that single-player campaign. Cool. I am surprised, mm-hmm. as I think a lot of people are, that there is a even halfway decent single-player campaign in a Battlefield game, which has been a long... I mean, I guess there was the cop one, but yeah. from like an actual Battlefield game that, you know, I, I reviewed Battlefield 1942 and 1990-whatever, yeah. and I remember my big complaint about it was was like that lack of single player content and that's been the whole way they can't do a single player game. Hardline was pretty solid. It was okay, yeah. but this is really a well constructed solo campaign. The Frostbite engine is smoking. I have not actually played much online, so mm. I, I can't give much of a verdict, but I'm I am impressed. I think it looks great. I love the also going to, to World War One. It does feel fresh and I've played uh, Eve Valkyrie now. i I got the code for that. I love Thumper? that game. Thumper? Thumper is very cool too, yes. Thumper. Yeah, no, P- PlayStation VR. Thumper. The, the more that, you know, I've been sinking time into it, the less I want to take it off my head. It's really, really addictive. We just got the Rift in as well, so we're going to start doing a lot more stuff on uh, yeah. on sort of comparing all three of the headsets and checking out the latest games for the Vive and the Rift yeah. and sort of getting up more up to date on our VR stuff. But you, we should get together again soon and talk about uh, VR in 2016. I am playing all of those VR devices, and I've been actually just been going back to the Rift because of the PSVR to kind of get myself back up to speed with what I've missed on the Rift. And yeah. I'm very excited about the December release of the touch controllers. Yes. That is, I think, going to be another big moment 
in VR this mm -hmm. year because even though we've got some touch controllers with the Vive, they're not they're kind of big and, and wonky. The move controllers, we talked about this, it's like holding two dicks. Yeah. And the they got, I mean touch they, honestly controllers. PlayStation <laughs> has got to refresh those move things as quickly as because all of the tracking issues I think are relatable to using those move like there's tracking complaints and stuff out there i've been pretty good with yeah. sitting down and using the, the move light what your lighting situation has a lot to do with yeah. it because that playstation camera is not designed those, for this those moves are bullshit they really they dicks, need they need bad, to upgrade bad from dicks there. They're i'm sure two bad dicks that'll be the first thing that they do next year so the touch controllers for the rift are are i think the the best designed of those that I've experienced. So and I've better actually than the it. Vive Much, much ones. better. Yeah, but um, I think whatever Vive's coming up with, I mean, it's going to be a race now to right. get the best controllers. Yeah. I think those touch controllers is going to be another moment in VR, so I'm excited for that yeah. uh, in December. But obviously a lot happening between now and then. Yeah. Titanfall and yeah. Dishonored. Have you got Titanfall? Uh, no, I've not. Yeah, I haven't neither. gotten that or Dishonored yet, okay. but uh, those are my next. Uh, oh, can't wait. All right, we'll talk soon about more cool things. But uh, what a day. What a day, and it's only it's only like 1.30. High five on this day. Thank oh you, Ben God. Silverman. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time in Vic's Basement. And thank you, Facebook, for being here first. I haven't looked there at all. Esports. Yes. <laughs> Esports. Esports. <laughs>